there we go. Here we are talking about the Kinefinity. So if you're wondering, I am sitting on an Apple box. Honestly, I've been on set for the past couple of months straight on different projects from that I just decided, you know, an Apple box just felt comfortable to sit on. So today I wanted to talk about the Kid Infinity camera in my circle of uh, people that I had, was in the industry with me when I lived in the States. Um, no one had one. There was no rental house around me. So here in Toronto, there actually is a really cool rental house uh, that was available for us to try to check it out. And you know, after reading a lot of the forums, it seemed like it was a camera that would be able to handle a bit of a production um, and push it. So an opportunity came came to me. Did get a bit of a deal to have it a little bit longer. So it gave me an opportunity to play with the camera before taking it on this long shoot. Coincidentally, we also here in, in Toronto have this 40 hour film project, which is a global production um, of competition. and why not utilize that on that particular setup? I think that's the only way you can test out any camera. I think it's best to test out any new system that comes out by taking it on a shoot, especially an indie production, because I'm not trying to say that large productions don't, don't force cameras into craziness, but I feel like when you're on an indie production and a lot of people are wearing multiple hats, a lot of things can get bumped, a lot of things can be pushed around, because you know your your whole focus isn't just that one thing. You have like a person who can do a little bit of lighting and a little bit of grip and a little bit of first AC. And we did have a full team on the two productions, which is really nice. I had a camera operator, first AC, second AC, a couple of grips, a couple of gaffers, and then myself. I'm um, DPing on all those. I wanted to see what it can handle, and I wanted to share my my experience with uh, the community. Hence why this video. Lots of people are testing them, but. I mean, I still feel like there just isn't enough content to talk about it, and I felt like it was it was a, a time to, to bring that out. So here we are. So our build out for the way that we wanted to shoot for these two different projects, both narrative, the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K. The guy that's in Atex provided me with the PL mount, the seven inch Kinemon monitor. We had the small HD bottom with two 50 millimeter rods to the Mike full frame set. On the front of that, a wooden camera UMV1 universal matte box. On the back, an older Holland Cosmo 600 system by Nucleus M motor, and that's our rig. We felt that the Kinefinity um, log look that they have on the camera is a little too much, a little too much contrast, a little too much saturation was just pushing. So we're like, you know what, let's just load a LUT from uh, from some library. And then we decided, well, everyone keeps talking about how the RA LUTs get pretty dang close on this camera, why not plug them in? So we just said, screw it, let's go for it. And we did. The good thing about these cameras, they don't record um, the log, the LUT into the file. It just uh, It's just for preview. So you can never accidentally record any of these LUTs on there. So that's really nice. When we used it on the 48-hour film project, the team was very impressed. Obviously, the nervousness about that for us was like, well, you know, will this thing last through the time we're filming? And then we went on to doing our other short that had several days and time and prep that we had put into. I was reading online, a lot of people say the 4K on this camera looks great. We also agree, the 4K looked great on this camera. And that's what we stuck with, uh, which gave us about an hour ish of time on the one terabyte cards. A lot of really good things that come out of this particular camera. I really enjoyed that. Now, I unfortunately, with, that, with everything else, I have to talk about the things that just didn't work for us, the quirks we had to work through. It's good for the community. It's good for the company to be able to hear what are things that users are running into. And I'm not a person who bought it. I didn't buy this system. I'm utilizing as a rental. So when you first touch this camera, it, it feels, it doesn't feel fully finished, developed. The body feels great. But when you when you first touching it before I turned it on, some of the buttons, like especially that that little dial wheel, is a little finicky. It, it feels like it would pop off if I if I hit it wrong or if I turn it wrong. So I'd say, and then the button, same thing. It just felt uh, the finesse of the buttons didn't feel as as um, I guess top line as the rest of the body did. I will say the D tap was another thing we noticed um, on these systems, and it wasn't just the system being a rental unit. I noticed it on the, the Kin Infinity Mavo Edge 6K, and they had a new one for us to play with, and I was like, hmm, that it wasn't, it, I don't know if what it is, I don't know if it's the sizing or the tooling, how they get the D-tap in there, but it wasn't, and, I, and when I was watching other people's videos online, I saw people touching their D-taps, and it also shook the same way. So I think it's a manufacturing, overall that the DTAP just a little bit hint of uh, we use the DTAP on our wireless system didn't fall didn't, didn't disconnect or anything but 
just be mindful. Now, turning it on, it did take some time to turn on. I will tell you, yes, it takes a while to turn on. I think we timed it about 45 seconds was the average. Didn't notice that. It didn't bother us how long it took to turn on. We weren't doing critical time-based things. I think if you were on a documentary, if you were doing a sport, if you were just, you know, if you were doing a play for crying out loud and you wanted to just turn off your camera, save the battery and turn it back on, be mindful. There's like a minute of time for it to fire up. And the 45 seconds is for the camera. The monitor still needed another five to 10 seconds to also register. We noticed the camera's on because the wireless would re register and then it would go straight to the director's monitor and that would register and the monitor was still waiting another five, 10 seconds. So I did notice that. So there was even a delay on the monitor that we ran into. It was like, hmm, all right, additional 10 to 15 seconds just in case for the monitor. I don't know, again, since I didn't have the EVF, I wasn't able to test that part, but the monitor did take also a moment. The SDI ports, I'm gonna put, I, I did write this on there. The SDI ports to me were surprising. There are two SDI ports on this camera. That's really nice. Both of them though, send the exact same signal. And I think I've seen people online talk about how they wish this was different. We were looking through the menu thinking, okay, there's gotta be a menu for it. It doesn't have a menu system to change into a clean signal or a dirty signal for the SDI. If you're in a more um, studio-based area and you have a lot more controlled environment, um, it would have been nice to be able to do that kind of system where one cable, one hard, hard SDI went to a direction monitor, one SDI, hard SDI went to like your first AC, for instance, and each one had different kind of signal inputs. That's why it's nice to have a clean and dirty link. So I don't know if anyone who does the updates on the firmware, that's something that they haven't thought about or they just haven't noticed and people just haven't brought it up. I think it'd just be nice to have it in your menu system. I mean, I feel like it'd be an easy change some firmware to add that <laughs> capability to SDI, but hey, you know, I'm not the ones doing coding. I don't do coding. So the software was a little laggy. Um, I'm not gonna say it's not, you know, there's no show you coding. It does, it's it's nice. The touch screen works really clean. The buttons are very easy to get into. The settings are very easy to hold. I, I, I thankfully had read prior to renting the camera about the click and hold thing. So I learned about the click and hold and more settings popped up on one and two. Very simple, but it was a little laggy. We noticed if we tapped a few times, there's a couple of times we've tapped the camera through the day and um, and it wouldn't respond to us. And we're like, tap, tap again. We would tap two times, two, three times and not registering. And then we'd sit here and we click and hold a little bit longer. So maybe an extra half a second to a second and then it would register. So those are some things we noticed as the day progressed. Cause I mean, on the narrative shoot, we were, we left that thing on like almost consistently. We were dialing the ND kind of like those incremental pieces, which is very nice. I'm used to that cause I'd use it on my Sony FX9 as an incremental ND system, which is very cool and I love it. Um, so you can dial in, you know, 0.3s very easily uh, of ND. And when we were, there was a point when we had to do it for, we went from an inside to an outside scene and we went outside and we were dialing it in and we were sitting there dialing and it was like, uh, it's not moving. It's like, crap, that's right. We have to think about, we, we got used to the quirk by this point that it does take a moment. So we're like, okay, one, two, three, wait for it. One, two, three, wait for it kind of thing. You know, like, oh, let's go a full stop. We'll wait. And when we did that, we did a little too fast a couple of times and then the, We'd watch the the ND slowly. Sorry, we'd watch the ND slowly dial, and all of a sudden it would go on, off, on, off, on. I was like, okay, what's going on? And it did it. I think there's a couple of times it did it four or five times where the ND on, then you saw the little window go away, then it came back, and then went away, came back. It was a little concerning because they're like, we hope it stops. And we were sitting there watching it. We only dialed it a few times, and then we just sat there and just watched it do this up and down motion uh, four or five times twice very nervous <laughs> obviously moment we're like oh crap no no don't start giving us the gremlin now that we're halfway into the shoot but that was a weird quirk so again as the time went on it was having issue it was getting a little bit laggier it's i don't know if it's heat based that this stuff would start happening these m minor gremlins popped up you know because like people who utilize cameras and test them they're only testing them for a few hours they're not recording for a long time they're not um, you know, they're not running into heat um, rooms or cold to heat and extreme changes. And we were. So, I mean, I feel like heat jumped in there quite often. So don't know if that was part of the factor of us running into some of these things. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. There was one kind of freaky moment that happened to us on the shoot. It only happened once. The monitor decided to stop on us. It's just like, pfft, just turned off, would not turn on. And we turned off the system, turned on the system, turned off the system, turned on the system. Uh, we, we actually lost a bit of time. The AD was giving us a, a nervous look, a tick. Um, but <laughs> we made it through. 
And um, we got to the point like, okay, the monitor's just doing what it's doing. And we were, we, we got to the point we couldn't wait for it anymore. We said, well, maybe it's overheated. So we just unplugged it and let it, left it unplugged for, I think, a couple of um, 20, 30 minutes. We let this, a couple of these scenes go through. We kind of like adjusted it looking at another monitor. After about 30 minutes, the monitor came back on, thankfully. Um, that monitor, yeah, it, it did get hot. It felt very hot. Uh, so we were worried we burnt the monitor. Something we noticed, I don't know if anyone else has ran into that. I haven't heard anyone on the forums talk about it. I haven't heard anybody on the YouTube channels talk about it. So I don't know if it's something anyone has actually ran into yet. But then again, I don't know how many people have pushed these cameras to this, to those limits, you know, with like big productions and big crews. But um, yeah, something we ran into. So it's kind of odd. And it was with the 7-inch the Kinemon. So I guess their newer 7-inch monitor uh, wasn't the 5-inch. And again, I didn't have the EVF. Oh, and the camera itself did did give us one issue once, thankfully, only once. Um, that, I think it was on day three. Yeah, the end of day three, and uh, day three or four, and basically um, the camera wouldn't turn on. I wouldn't turn on it. Like, we would turn it on, you'd see the Kenny Penny logo come up, and then it sat. Just sat. And we sat there like, well, shoot. Again, it was middle of the day. It was, I think it was after lunch on this part, more halfway before we got close to the window. Um, and we were talking about like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we ended up like, just, we honestly, we turned it off and on, it would, it, it would go off. Like you'd hold the power button, it would shut off and turn it back on. It's almost like a computer. And um, we got to the point, we just, we just pulled the battery and we just sat there and just kind of waited for it. We decided to, Give us, give, well, thankfully, it was a moment we were able to request um, our AD to give us like a 15 minute, you know, tech break. Um, and so we did, and we took it, and we held it, didn't touch it, just left the camera alone. Um, I should have probably got a fan and fanned it down, but I didn't want to, um, or I didn't think about it at the time. Um, and then we plugged up the, the battery and it turned back on again. I also want to talk about, you know what, this video is getting pretty long already. I apologize. My final thoughts on this camera, you know, I like the system. I think it did a really good job. I enjoyed what we what we utilized, what we got out of it. I think for anyone who's looking to get one of these cameras for themselves, you'd be very happy, honestly. It's, it's had, even with all of its quirks and all the things that I, I was talking about how, what we ran into, I feel like those are things that can be, as many people have said online and on the forums, that um, firmware can fix a lot of things if they just take the time to do it. And I would say to Ken Infinity, get this camera into more people's hands. I mean, really. I think it has, you have a good product here. I think the edges have done are nice products. And I think the only way more people will know about it and not just whisper about it is if you just put it in more rental houses pockets, which give it, they give the capability of more indie filmmakers who I feel like this is more geared towards to utilize. Good job, Ken Infinity. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to my video. I'm sorry if it's long. I didn't realize I talked so much about it, but I had a lot to say because you know it's fun utilizing a camera on set and pushing it to its limits and sharing my thoughts and my experience with the camera that we had for almost two weeks. So very cool. I would have done the video sooner and had the camera here to show you and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I was running onto a new shoot and I had to just drop off the camera and drop me off gear and said, forget it. I just pass it off to my camera operator who returned it for me. Um, and then I said to make this video later once I got the BTSs. Uh, from the BTS team and which they recently given to me. So here we are. So thanks a lot Have a good one and hopefully I make more videos about more gear that I've ran into because I'm starting to get some really neat Opportunities for the narrative space and hopefully I can share those experiences with all of you Because that's I think how we all help each other on YouTube is talk about the experiences And there's a lot of great people who already do tech chit chats about gear I think the experiences give that extra bit of information to people who are trying to dive onto the bars themselves. Have a good one, everyone. Take care.